Okay, let us now proceed to cross or vector product of two intersecting vectors. Now, let us now try to consider two vectors in here and the included angle is equal to theta. How do we define the cross product of two vectors? So, the cross product of two vectors, A and B, is defined as the product of their magnitudes by the sign of their included angle. So if you're going to get now, A cross B. So these are the two vectors. So this is equal to the magnitude of vector A. Multiply this one by the magnitude of vector B, sine of the included angle. And the included angle in here is equal to theta. Now, you try to take note that the result of the cross product of two vectors is another vector in the direction of the right-hand rule. So your AB sine of theta, to make this as a vector, let us try to multiply this one by a unit vector, small n. Now, what are the for the properties of the cross product? So we have some of the properties. So first in here is the cross product of two vectors is not commutative. So this is not commutative. Hence, vector A cross vector B is not equal to vector B cross vector A. So are you going to remove now? This is not commutative. The uh, unequal sign. So we have your vector A cross vector B is now equal to negative vector A cross vector B. So we have add another properties or property of the cross product. This is associative when multiplied by a scalar. That's associative. multiplied by a scalar. So if we have the distributive when multiplied by a scalar. So if you have now M is a scalar value. Okay, quantity A cross B. And this is therefore equal to M A cross B or this is equal to vector A cross the scalar magnitude of M cross B. So that is now the th second property of the cross product of two intersecting vectors. Now another one is it is distributive over vector addition. We have distributive over vector addition. That is the third property, distributive over vector addition. So vector C cross, so we have parentheses, A cross B, A, A plus B, Vector A plus vector B. So it is vector C cross vector A plus vector C cross vector B. So that is associative, a distributive over vector addition. So let us try to consider now the uh, <coughs> cross product of the orthogonal unit vectors. So are we going to determine the cross product of the orthogonal unit 
refractors. What is the product of the orthogonal unit vectors? <coughs> so let's try to consider this one in here is now your Z. Z axis. So we have your <coughs> X axis and this one in here is now the Y axis. So this is your X, Y, and Z. So the orthogonal unit vectors in here, okay, in the positive direction of the x-axis, that is now your I. In the positive direction of the y-axis, so we now have your J. And in the positive direction of the z-axis, this is now your K. So we have the unit, we have now your orthogonal unit vector. So again, your I, J, and K corresponds to the positive direction of X, Y, and Z axis, respectively. Now, how are we going to determine now the uh, cross product of a unit of the orthogonal unit vectors by itself. So if you try to get now your I cross I. So I cross I, from the definition of the cross product, it is equal to the, mag the uh, product of the magnitudes of the two vectors by the sign of their included angle. And the sign of the included angle of a unit vector cross that vector, cross itself, is equal to zero. Sine of zero is equal to zero, and therefore I cross I is equal to zero. We also have now your J cross J. The included angle is zero, and sine of zero is equal to zero. And also, the other orthogonal unit vectors, so that is now your K, cross k, again, that is equal to zero because the included angle is, uh, the sign of the included angle, which is zero, is equal to zero. Now, if two orthogonal unit vectors follow each other alphabetically in the clockwise direction, the result is the positive value of the third. So we now have your orthogonal unit vectors. That is I. We now have your J. And this is now your K. So if so the cross product of the two in the clockwise manner. So if you have I cross J that is equal to K. The result is the positive value of the third. So if you have J cross K, J cross K is now equal to the positive value of the third, and that is now equal to I. And then we now have your K cross I. K cross I, it is now the positive value of the third, and that is now your J. So that is now your J. Now since the cross product of two vectors are not commutative, then your J cross I. So if you try to get now your J cross I, so that is sequel to negative K. And K cross J, that is sequel to negative I. And I cross K, that is sequel to negative J. So this is the cross product of the orthogonal unit vectors. Okay, so let us try to determine now or uh, the uh, cross product of two vectors. Say we have vector A and your vector A in Cartesian vector form is now your AXI plus AYJ plus A 
z k. The other vector is now your vector b. So your vector b is now equal to b x i in Cartesian vector form plus b y j plus b z k. So let us try to determine now the cross product of these two vectors a and b. And this is therefore equal to we have a x i plus a y j plus a z k cross we have b x i plus b y j plus b z k so if you try to evaluate now the cross product of these two vectors this is equal to a x i so we have a so this is now your a x i so we have cross b x i and then plus we have a x i cross b y j plus have your a x i that is b z k k plus we have a y j cross b x i And then plus a y j cross b y j plus a y j cross b z k. Now plus we have a z k. cross b x i plus a y j uh, a z k plus a z k cross b y j plus a z k cross b Z K. So this is therefore equal to. So we have A X that is B X I cross I. So we have now your I cross I plus A X B Y. So we have I cross J. I cross J plus A X B Z we have I cross K then we have plus A Y B X then we have J cross I plus we have a y b y j cross j and then plus a y b z we have j cross k plus we have a z B X K cross I plus A Z B Y K cross J plus 
we have A Z B Z K cross K. So let's try to evaluate this one now, applying the uh, properties of the orthogonal unit vectors. Okay, so your I cross I is equal to zero, then that is now equal to zero. So your I cross J, so we now have AX, BY, I cross J is equal to positive K. And then we have AX, BZ, I cross K. So I cross K is negative J. So that is negative. And then we have AY, BX, J cross I. So your J cross I is negative K. That is minus. That is minus K. Then we have AY, BY. J cross J is equal to zero. And then we now have AY, B, Z, J cross K, J cross K is positive I, so it's positive I. And then we have A, Z, B, X, K cross I is positive J, so that is plus, so we have positive J. Then we have A, Z, B, Y, K cross J, K cross J as negative I. And then we now have A, Z, B, Z, K cross K again is equal to zero. So this is how we have to evaluate now. So if you try to get in here now, so let us try to. So AX, BY, K, and minus AY, BY, K. So this is AX, BY, my, uh, my, no, uh, that is K. <laughs> Minus AY BX K. And then we now have uh, plus plus uh, AZBX K. A, Z, B, X, J minus A, X, B, Z, J. And then we have plus, this is A, Y, B, Z, I, Minus A Z B Y I. Okay, so therefore, the cross product, we evaluate the cross product of two vectors. So this is therefore equal to your A X B Y minus A Y B X. That is K. Now, plus, we have A, Z, B, X, minus A, X, B, Z. We have 
J plus this is your AY BJ minus AJ BY and that is now your I. So this is how we have to evaluate the cross product of two intersecting vectors. Now, so let us try to rearrange the cross product of the two vectors A and B, starting with I, followed by J, and followed by K. Now, so if you try to take a look in here now, it is very hard to, okay, or difficult to memorize this cross product of the two vectors. Unlike in your dot product, so it is just the sum of the magnitudes of AX BX plus AYBY plus AZBZ. Now, so in here, if you try to look at now the cross product of the two products, this is the four, which is now a third order determinants. This is now a third order determinants. So vector A cross vector B is now equal to so we have your AX we have your AY and then we now have your AZ. So this is now your BX we have your BY, and this is your BZ. So we now have your I, this is now your J, and this is now your K. So let us try to evaluate now the cross product of the two vectors using now your third order determinants. So we have the first column in here, so we have AX, so this is now BX, and that is I, and we have the second column. So we have your AY, we now have your BY, and this is now your J. So the cross product of these two vectors is now equal to, okay, so we have <coughs> this one in here. Okay, so this is. So we have positive. So that is therefore equal to AX, BY, and then we now have your K. So we have another one is this one in here. So we have a plus. So this one is AY. So this is still positive plus AYBZI, AYBZI. And then we still have this one in here. So this is positive in this direction, down to the right. So we have positive. So that is still equal to positive AZ. B, X, and that is now your J. And then we now have minus. Okay, so in this direction, okay, so if you try to go in this manner, so this is negative. So we have minus A, Z, B, Y, I, A, Z, B, Y, I. And then, the other one, so this is negative. So we have minus A, X, B, Z, we have your J. And then minus so that is negative. So we have minus AYBXK. 
a y b x k so this is therefore equal to so we are going to consider first your i so we have now your a y so b z i minus a z b y i plus we have a z b x j minus a x b z j and then plus a x b y k minus a y b x k so this is therefore equal to so that is a y b z minus a z b y that is i then plus we have a z b x minus a x b z j and then plus a x b y minus a y b x and that is now k so if you try to take a look in here now which is the same as the expansion of the cross product of two vectors so to determine the cross product of two vectors we can make use of the third order determinants so that is a y b z a z b y a z b x a x b z so we have a x b y a y b x now this third order determinant can be reduced to a second order determinants. Now, this third order determinants can be reduced to a second order determinant. So at this point, we have now your i. So let us try to uh, remove the row of i and the column of i. So what is left in here is now your a y. We have b y. This is your a z, and this is now your b z. And then plus again your j. Let us try to remove the row of j and the column of j. So what's left in here is we have a z that is now your b z and then a x and this is now your b x and then plus k let's try again to remove the row of k and the column of k so we have a x b x and we have a y that is b y so let us try to evaluate now the cross product of the two vectors so we have you try to take a look in here now so this one in here is positive so we have Positive A Y B Z, and then we have at this point S negative. So we have minus A Z B Y, and then I. So we have plus. Again, we have. Uh, 
So there's one in here again. So that is positive. So this is now your AZ BX minus. Okay, so we have this point in there. So that is negative. So that is minus AX BZ. And that is now your J. And then we have plus. Again, this one in here is positive again. So this is positive. So we have AX, BY, and then we have minus. This one in here, that is negative. So we have minus AY, BX, and that is now your K, which is the same to the previous evaluation of the cross product of two vectors. Okay, how are we going to evaluate the scalar triple product? So speaking of scalar triple product, it involves the dot product of a vector. Okay, say that vector is A. And the cross product of two vectors, say B and C. Okay, so vector A dot vector B cross vector C. Or vector B cross vector C dot a vector A. So how are we going to evaluate now the scalar triple product? So it involves the dot product of a vector, say A, and the cross product of two vectors, B and C. So now, if you try to get now your vector, so first, if you try to consider now the cross product of the two vectors, say vector B cross vector C. And this is equal to, that is now your BX, we now have your BY, and this is now your BZ. This is your CX, we now have your CY, this is now your CZ. So we have your I, this is your J, and that is now your K. Okay, now... So, let, I will going to reduce this one to a second order determinants. So, we have your I, and this is now your BY, CY. We have BZ, CZ. Plus, we now have your J. So, we have BZ, we have CZ, that is BX. And that is now your CX. Plus, we have your K. So your K, so we have BX, CX. We now have your BY and CY. So the cross product, therefore, of B and C is now equal to, so we have BY, we have C say minus B say that is C Y and then we have your I. Next is plus. So we have B X B Z. We have C X minus B X. We have Z Z and that is now your J. Plus, we have BX, CY, minus BY, CX, and that one is now your K. Now, let us now then try to evaluate now 
the cross product of the two of vector a the dot product of vector a and the cross product of these two vectors b and c so we have now your vector a dot we have your vector b cross vector c so this is equal to so let's try to consider that your vector a has now your ax plus so this is now your ax i plus a y j plus a j k that we now have the cross product that we now have the cross product of this two vector so this is now that so we have your b y c c minus b z z y and i plus we have b z c x minus b x c z and that is your j now plus we have b x c y minus b y c x k so let us evaluate now the dot product of this of vector a and the cross product of vector c vector b and vector c so first in here is so we have now your ax b y z z so ax multiply this one by b y z z minus b z c y you try to take note again that the dot product of two vectors the result is a scalar value and then plus we have your ax plus your ay then we have your bz cx minus bx c z plus your a z and uh, we have uh, b x c y minus b y c x so that is therefore the dot product of vector a and the cross product of vector b and uh, c so this is therefore equal to if you try to expand we have ax that is b y c z minus ax b z that is c y plus a y that is b z c x minus a y b x c z plus a z b x c y minus a z b y c x so that is therefore the dot product of vector a and the cross product of b and c now so if you try to take a look in here now this is now again the result and again if you try to take a look in here now it is difficult again to remember this uh, expansion of a scalar triple product so we can this 
is now in the form of uh, which can be expanded. So this form can be expanded. for a third order order determinants okay so we can expand this one using now a third order determinants okay so again I'm going to repeat A X B Y Z Z minus A X B Z Z Y plus A Y B Z C X minus A Y B X C Z plus A Z B X C Y minus A Z B Y Z C X. Okay, which is expanded using a third order determinants. So if you try to your A that B cross C is now equal to so we now have your AX we have AY this is AZ so we have BX that is now your BY BZ and we have CX CY and Z, Z. Okay, so we have your AX, that is BX, we have CX. So we have your AY, we have your BY, and that is now your CY. So this is therefore equal to, again, this one in here is positive. So we have now AX BY CC plus still have this one in here. So again, we have positive plus AY BZ CX and then plus this one in here so that is plus so we have plus a z b x c y and then we have minus so that is minus minus a z we have b y C X minus A X B Z C Y minus A Y B X and C Z. Okay, so where it says the same as this one in here. So we have AX, BY, CZ. So I'm going to get this one, minus. We have AX, BZ, CY. And then we have plus. We have AY, that is BZ, CX minus AZ. So we have minus AY BX BX CZ plus we have your AZ BX CY. Minus, we have uh, AZ B 
by c x. Okay, so we did uh, combine the two, this one, and uh, ax, this one in here. And then we have your ay, so this one, and uh, this one, and your az, and uh, az, which is the same as the previous expansion of the scalar triple product. How are we going to determine the moment of a force about a point? So previously, we have defined that moment is equal to the force multiply this one by its perpendicular distance along the line of action to any moment center or to the moment center. So if I will now going to extend this force in here, okay, so this is therefore the line of action of the force, say this is now your force F. So what is therefore the perpendicular? So this is therefore the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the moment center. And let us consider that one as D. So to determine now the moment of the force about point O, it is F. Multiply this one by the distance D. However, in this case, we can now apply your cross product in determining the moment of a force. So first in here is, let us try to introduce a position vector. Let's introduce a position vector R originating from the moment center. From the moment center, originating from the moment center to an any point along its line of action. Point along its line of action. Provided that the coordinates the coordinates of that point okay is known. So let us try to introduce a position vector originating from the moment center, and our moment center is now your O. So I'm going to introduce a position vector at this point, and that one is now the position vector. Okay, so this is now, okay, if I'm going to extend, that is now the position vector, and this is now your R. And the included angle in there is equal to theta. So the moment of the force F, so if you're going to get now the moment of the force F about point O is now equal to the position vector introduced cross the vector itself. You try to take note of this, that the position vector always comes ahead than that ahead of the vector itself. Moment of a force about a line or about an axis. So we're going to determine now the moment of this force about the x-axis about the y-axis and about the z-axis. So if you try to get now the moment 
So first, let us try to determine the moment of the force about point O. So if you now have, this is now the moment of a force about point O. So first, to determining the moment of a force about a point, so first let us try to introduce a position vector. From the moment center to any point along its line of action. So this is now provided again that the coordinates of that point is known. So this is now the position vector which is equal to R. So that the moment of the force about point O is now equal to R, the position vector, cross the vector itself. So how are we going to determine now the moment of this force about the X, the Y, and the Z axis? So if you try to recall your dot product, okay, so your dot product is a way of determining the components of a force in any direction. So if you try to get now the moment of a force F, so the moment of the force F in the direction OX, it is now equal to R cross F multiply or dot a unit vector in the direction OX. Okay, so this is now the component of this force about point O in the direction OX. And the moment of the force in the direction of the Y axis, OY, is now equal to the moment of this force about point O Okay, that a unit vector in the desired direction. So the desired direction is OY. And the moment of the force about the Z axis, so that is your Z is now equal to, that is R cross F. It's the moment of the force about point O in the direction of the z-axis. So we have to apply your dot product in the desired direction, which is the z-axis. Okay, so we now have your vector representation of moment. That is now the vector representation. of moment. So the vector representation of moment is just the same as in the standard Cartesian form of representing a force. So this is equal to mxi plus myj plus mzk. So this is similar to the Cartesian vector form of representing a vector. So the magnitude of this moment of M is now equal to the square root of Mx squared plus we have your my square plus mz square. So that's how we determine the magnitude of a moment which is represented in a Cartesian vector form. Okay, so we have a problem one. Determine the moment of the force F and the force F in here is equal to, so that is 40i plus 80j. 
about point O. So how are we going to determine now the moment of the first F about point O? So first, let us try to introduce a position vector originating from the moment center to any point along the line of action of the force provided that that point, the coordinates of that point is known. So this is the for the position vector and that is position vector ROA. So to determine now the moment of the first F about point O is now equal to the position vector ROA cross the vector itself. So cross the vector itself. Now, let us try to get now the coordinates of points. So we have the origin that is 0, 0, and 0. Then we have your point A. So the coordinates in the X is 360 mm or that is 0 0.36 meters. And in the Y axis, the coordinates is 150 mm or that is 0 0.15 meters um, okay so these are now in meters now let's try to determine the components of the distance OA that is directed from the origin, uh, from the moment center to any point along its line of action. So we have A minus O. And we now have your Y component. So 0 0.36 minus Zero, that is equal to 0 0.36. Then we have 0 0.15 minus 0. So we have 0 0.15. <coughs> now, your position vector OA is now equal to XI, that is 0 0.36I plus yj, which says 0.15j. Let us try to determine now the moment of the force f about point O. So the position vector, hence the position vector, is now 0.36 we have 0 0.15 and then 0 because we do not have your z-axis. And then we now have the force itself, 40. We have 80 and that is 0. So we have your i, this is now your j, and we now have your k. So let us try to reduce this one in here into a second order determinants. So this is second to <coughs> 0 0.15 and this is now your 80, 0, 0. Plus J, so we have 0, 0, so we have 0 0.36 and this one is 40 and then plus k 
So we have 0 0.36, this is 40, and then we have 0 0.15, and this one is 80. So the moment of the first F about point O is now equal to so this one is zero minus zero so we have zero this is zero minus zero that is equal to zero so we now have this one is now positive so that is equal to 0 0.36 by 80. So 0 0.36 by 80 is 28.8. That is 28.8. And then minus. So this is minus. 40 by 0.15 and this is equal to 6. So this is equal to 6. And therefore, we now have your K. And this is equal to 22.8. 22.8 Newton. So this one is in Newtons. Hence, the moment 22.8 K in Newtons. Hence, the moment, the magnitude of the moment of the force about point O is now equal to 22.8 Newtons. That is the magnitude of the moment of the first F about point O. Problem number two. Let us try to deter a bar is bent and loaded as shown. End of figure. Determine the moment of first F about point O. So the force F in here is equal to 8. The magnitude is equal to 875 newtons. So first, let's try to determine now the coordinates. Of points. So this is your point A. So we have the origin, of course, 0, 0, and 0. So your point A in here is now having a coordinate of in the x-axis. So your point A is 200 mm, or that is equal to 0 0.2 meters. Now in the y-axis, this is the y-axis, so that is 250 mm, or that is 0. 25 meters and in the z axis this is equal to 150 mm or that is 0 0.15 meters 0 0.15 meters now to determine now the moment of the first f about point o is again let us introduce a position vector OA cross the vector itself. Cross the vector itself. So this is now the position vector I will going to introduce. So originating from the moment center to any point along its line of action. Okay, so this is your R... O A. So let us try to determine now 
the components of the distance of A. Okay, so we have the X component, we have the Y component, and the Z component. So this is therefore equal to OA, so A minus O. That is 0 0.2 minus 0, that is 0 0.2. Then we have 0 0.25, that is equal to 0 0.25. 25 meters and then we have 0 0.15 minus 0 so we have 0 0.15 hence your ROA or the position vector originating from the moment center which is point O to point A so it's XI that is 0.2I plus 0 0.25 J plus 0 0.15 K. Now, let us now express the vector F in Cartesian, the force F in Cartesian vector. So that is therefore equal to the magnitude multiply this one by a unit vector. So, the unit vector in here is now equal to in the x-axis, so we have 75 mm, or that is equal to point zero seventy-five i So, it is point zero. 75i. And then we have the y. Okay, so that we now have the y axis as we have uh, is the y axis. So it is equal to 10.15j. That is 150mm. And uh, in the z axis, it is 0, 140mm or 0 0.14, that is k, a lower the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude is now equal to the square root of 0 0.075 square, the 0 0.15 square plus 0 0.14 square. So the unit vector is 0.075i plus 0.15j plus 0.14k or lower the square root. So lower the square root of okay, that is 0 0.04 Seven seven two five. Let's try to express now F in Cartesian vector form. So your F in here is now equal to eight hundred seventy five. Multiply this one by point zero seventy five I plus 0 0.15 J plus 0 0.14 K a lower the square root of 0 0.047725 so the, in Cartesian vector form it's 75 by 0 0.075 a lower square root of uh, 0 0.04775 is 300.398i plus 875 by 0.15 all over the square root 
of 0 0.04775 is 600.0 600.795 J plus 875 by 0.14 all over the square root 0 0.04775 is 560 560.742 K so let us now evaluate the uh, moment of this vector about point O. So the moment of the vector F about point O is now equal to so we have ROA is 0 0.2 we have 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 15. Then we have 300.398, we have 600.795, and 560.742. So we now have your I, this is now your J, and this is now your K. So let's try to reduce this one to a second order determinant. So you have your I, so we have 0 0.25, we have 600.795. And then 0 0.15, that is 560.742. Plus J, so we have 0 0.15. 560.742, we have 0 0.2, and this one is 300.398. So plus your K, which says 0 0.2. We have 300.398, and then we have 0 0.25, that is 600.795. So the moment of the first F about point O is now equal to so we have 0.25 by 560.742 is, uh, okay, let us now try to evaluate or determine now the uh, moment of uh, the force F about 0.2. So we have 0.25 by 560.742, 140.186. So that is minus 0.15 by 600.795, 90.119. So that is I. Plus, we have 0.15. So that is 0.15 by 300.398. So that is equal to... 45.06 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.2 by 560 so that is 560.742 so that is okay so we have 0 0.2 by 560.742 that is 112.148 112.148 so we now have your J so we have plus 0.2 by 
0.2 by 600.795. So we have 120.159 minus 0.25 by 300.398. Minus seventy five point zero nine nine point ten, and that is now your K. So that the moment of the force F about point two is one forty point one eight six minus 90.119 so this is equal to 50.067 i and then we have 45.06 minus 112.148 so this is negative 67 Point zero eight eight minus sixty seven point zero eight eight J, and then we have one twenty point one five nine minus seventy five point ten. So this is equal to plus forty five point zero five nine K. So this is therefore the moment of the factor F about point O.